Good day to you. I won't bother asking who you are, because it's clear that who you're saying you are is Keith Bingham, a telephone sanitizer from Solly Hull. What you are saying is you are six foot tall, demi-male, and poly by curious. What you're saying is you're 37 years old, a Sagittarius, and you believe some rather titillating things about lizards that we're going to explore in this interview. You could probably already sense the theme. So you're saying, you're saying, you're just saying, you're saying, you're saying that, but you're saying, you're saying, 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 you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're just saying, you're saying, just saying, you're saying, just saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're you're saying, 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 and men need to quote it because women need to hear it. And actually fucking listen this time. Does it bother you that your audience is predominantly male? Does that, isn't, isn't that a bit divisive? Men listen to me because they can relate to what I'm saying. Maybe that's how men want their relationships, those men. It's a vast generalisation to call it divisive. The majority of television audiences are female. Is that divisive? What gives you the right to say that? I mean, maybe that's how women want their relationships, those women. I mean, you're making these vast generalizations. I don't think you're taking this seriously, Keith. Here in the UK, for example, let's take that as an example. The gender pay gap stands at just over 9%. You've got women at the BBC recently saying that the broadcaster is illegally paying them less than men to do the same job. So you're saying we should shut down the BBC? I quite agree. I mean, if women are claiming the BBC is breaking the law, you must listen and believe. Women do not lie and are never wrong. In fact, all a woman has to do, according to law now, is announce to the police that she feels victimized by the BBC. And Abra fucking Kadabra, the BBC is guilty of a hate crime. <laughs> Why, yes, Pob. You are next. <laughs> I remember when Channel 4 made sense. So you're saying, you're saying, you're just saying, you're saying, you're saying, <laughs> I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. But you're saying, you're saying the thing that radical feminists are saying. I'm not saying why it exists, but it exists. You have always been my rock, Pob. So it seems to a lot of women that they're still being dominated and excluded. So what you're saying is women are cynical and paranoid. That's a gap between median hourly earnings. So what you're saying is women are lazy. On average, you're getting paid 9% less than a man. That's not fair, is it? So what you're saying is women are not fair. I'm doing what you're doing. Fairly obviously. The traditional expectation in these situations is that one addresses what is said and attempts to correct where the facts are wrong or the logic is faulty. But I thought I'd do it your way instead, and simply take every statement I hear and zealously twist it into you think women are inferior, just to see how easy it is. And you know what? It is remarkably easy. Doing journalism is difficult. Asking questions is difficult. But this fucking parlor game that you play, where you hear a sentence, any sentence, and reimagine that sentence as a declaration of misogyny, is anything but difficult. I could do it with my brain closed. I can shut off 99% of my neural functions and I can still do this shit. Let's go. Shouldn't you say to women, rather than being agreeable and not asking per for a pay rise, go and ask for a pay rise. So you're saying it's women's fault that they don't get equal pay. Do you agree that you would be happy if that pay gap was eliminated completely? So you're saying we should all be communists? And if millions of women die of starvation, who cares? That's what you're saying? I think I take issue with the idea of the typical woman. So you're saying women are the issue? And typical ones at that? Because, you know, all women are different. So you're saying men are normal and women are different? I'm already bored of this game. Time for a poop. I think I take issue with the idea of the typical woman. Because, you know, all women are different. On average, on average, on average, on average, you're getting paid 9% less than a man. I think I take issue with the idea of the average woman because, you know, all women are different. Average, 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 all women are different. Average. That's a gap between median hourly earnings. Median, 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 average. I think I take issue with the idea of the median average woman because, you know, all women are different. As you can see, in this philosophy, there is no such thing as an average typical woman. As a matter of fact, it's rude to speak of such an entity as the average typical woman. 
Unless, of course, you're talking about a form of victimization, in which case, yes, the average woman is a victim of whatever plates of bullshit we could keep spinning in the dark. That's not fair, is it? Well, that depends on what you want. Let's carry on. Okay, you say women become more vulnerable when they have children. You talked to one of your YouTube interviews about crazy harpy sisters. So, simple question. Is gender equality a myth in your view? Is that something that's just never gonna happen? So what you're saying is, women are not vulnerable when pregnant. Something, 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 quote unquote, crazy harpy sisters, gender equality is the one true God. I'm, I'm not very good at this game. I think that might actually be what you're saying. Is gender equality a myth? I, is this a myth? This, this apparition standing next to me. It's a ghostly image of an anthropomorphic duck-billed platypus wearing Jedi robes. Do you know what I call it? Gender equality. Hello, gender equality, the dead platypus Jedi ghost. How are you today? I'm afraid it can't speak and you can't see it and it has no material presence that can be measured to anyone's clinical satisfaction. And I call it gender equality. Now are we going to stand around virtue signaling while our imaginary friends have a dick measuring contest? Or might we indulge in the practice of discussing the properties of reality? The huh? simple question is, do you believe in equal pay? <laughs> yes. Yes, I do believe in equal pay. I believe it exists. Or am I supposed to say, no, equal pay does not exist and I believe it should? So it's not a simple question at all, is it? It's needlessly ambiguous. Do you believe in gender equality? You talk about gender equality like it's actually a deity, and then you get offended when people suggest that it might be a myth. And by the way, you invite the same shit when you say, do you believe in global warming? The appropriate question would be something like, what do you know, what do you think, and what can you tell me about global warming? Are there any aspects or avenues of the field that you find dubious? But do you believe in global warming is a question that has no scientific answer. When you talk about a field of science as though it's an article of faith, you make a mockery of the scientific method and you do nothing but fuck up your own cause. And you can expect to get garbage thrown at you from both sides of the bloody fence, you useless minging flange wad. So you're saying give people equality of, of opportunity, that's fine. Correct. I left that one in because you did me the service of getting it right striving for the top, but you're going to yeah. put all those hurdles in their way, as has been in their way for centuries. The only obstacle you could be speaking of is the equality of opportunity that was mentioned just now, and you consider that a hurdle. Imagine for me, if you will. Imagine, if you were a little girl, and I said to you, hey, little girl, there's a bunch of hurdles in your way, and they've been there for centuries. Working life is hell for women, because it's full of men who hate you and harass you and illegally pay you less for the same work. If you were a little girl, and everyone around you said that to you, how would you react? I would go, well, I might as well just go and play with my Cindy dolls, because I'm not going to get the top job I want. Well, 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 well. You suck. What about real conversation between women, is that something or are we sort of too amenable and reasonable? So you're saying women are agreeable? So that's the thing, successful women, I'm not very agreeable. So you're saying women aren't agreeable? Well, here's a radical idea. Why don't the bosses adopt some, the male bosses, shall we say? So you're saying women need to be saved by men? Adopt some female traits so that women don't have to fight and get their sharp elbows out for the pay rises. So you're saying men should take their will to succeed, their drive to succeed, and their responsibility to succeed, and sacrifice it all on the altar of gender equality because women don't think it's fair that they should have to try hard as well. Oh wait, I did it again. That is what you're saying. So you're saying, you're just saying, you're saying, just saying, you're saying, just saying, you're saying, women have some sort of duty to sort of help fix the crisis of masculinity. Funny, there are some parts of the stereotype you don't wish to challenge. There are still men dominating our industries, our society, and therefore they've dictated the terms for so long that women have to battle. 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 
Now say it with a poppy, bitch. I dare you. I double fucking dare you with jimmies on. Say it with your poppy on. Next time it's November, and you're wearing a poppy on national television, I want you to look right into the lens, wear your straightest face, and complain about the battling that women have had to do. I don't often stoop to this kind of crassness, my good lady, but you're really beginning to cunt me off. It's just accepted. If they're doing the same job, they get the same pay. And if they get the same vote, they should get the same draft. Yes, pushing for it now is too little too late, darling. You might want to point that out with a poppy on. And the market is dominated by men. Wrong! People who stay at home looking after children, by and large, they are still women. So they're going out doing the shopping. In other words, they are dictating what is done with the finances, either from the comfort of their homes or from the freedom of open commerce. Women have always held this role of domestic dictator since as far back in history as could be ascertained, while men have always had the role of battler. But thank fuck you're here, Cathy, to change the game and challenge the system by making sure that women never have to battle and men never get to dictate. Bravo, Cathy. Bra frigging vo. That's been proven that men, for that you buy a blue bicycle helmet, it's going to cost less than a pink one. Then buy a bloody blue one. You what? You don't want a blue one? Well, that's a problem. Evidently, they tried making the blue ones more expensive. And when little boys said, I want a blue one, their parents were quite ready and willing to reply, fuck off, you're getting the cheap one. And given where the market has landed, it's quite evident that fuck you, you're getting the cheap one is a phrase we are reluctant to say to girls. Ready and willing though we are to say it to boys. But I guess this is another part of the stereotype that doesn't seem to bother you. Is it not desirable to have some of those female traits? So you're saying I should drink your piss? Is it not desirable to have some of them at the top of business? So you're saying you want to piss in my face? Feminine traits, why are they not desirable at the top? Yeast. But we also know, because companies by and large have not been dominated by women over the centuries, we have nothing to compare it to. So what you're saying is, since you've been gone, I can do whatever I want. I can see whomever I choose. I could eat my dinner in a fancy restaurant, but nothing, I said nothing can take away these blues. Because apparently nothing compares to you. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a trans person's right not to be offended? That question offends me, so you're not allowed to ask it. So you haven't sat there and... I mean, that was the stupidest thing you've said in this interview. And, and that's like being the stupidest thing in a jar of pickled, stupid things. I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. I mean... Excuse me while I take a drink from my glass of get wrecked, bitch. Mmm, <sighs> tastes exactly like suck it. OK, tell us how that philosophy is in any way comparable. Well done. You finally asked me something sensible like a journalist should. I will now tell you, as requested, how your philosophy is in some way comparable to Mao's philosophy. All I have to do is repeat back to you what you've actually said, replacing one MacGuffin for another, as per the given example. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump Chairman Mao's right not to be offended? Do you see how that sounds insane and brainwashed anywhere outside Mao's China? but perfectly reasonable within it. I could swap that for anything, whether it's the workers' union or the Aryan bloodline or the trans people. You pick your favourite human MacGuffin and you insert it into a sentence that would sound ludicrously totalitarian without it. Why should your right to freedom of speech trump a person's right not to be offended is a ludicrously stupid question. But you shoehorn the word trans in there, and now it's why should your right to freedom of speech trump a special person's right not to be offended? That's how you found yourself saying one of the most naive and hubristic things ever said on national television. Because you think you've got a magical MacGuffin with enough moral energy to clamp it open. Well, you haven't. You have failed. Mow, 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 mow,
the alt-right that you hate to be compared to? Aren't killing millions of people? You're comparing them with, you know, Chairman Mao. As you can see, I've become very bloody bored with you. The lobster. The lobster. Tell us about the lobster. The lobster. Tell us about the. Tell us about the lobster. I'll tell you what I'll do. You've all seen the supercut of So You're Saying, but I think a more instructive supercut would be the parts that come after that. I'm going to have you say the things you're saying I'm saying, as though you're saying them. It's a little bit of straw justice. You will take every straw garment you create and you will wear it. Wear it until you love it! So we can find out, one harrowing detail at a time, just what kind of demon it is you think you're gallantly fighting against, while in the cold light of reality you're sitting in front of me dribbling like a brain-damaged woodpecker. Come on, folks, let's suit journalism, Channel 4 News style. Kathy Newman, this is what you are saying. Women are just more sensible, they don't want that, they don't want that. Women are just more sensible, they don't want that, they don't want that. Women are unhappy, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if women are unhappy, it doesn't matter if women aren't getting to the top because that makes them unhappy, that makes them unhappy. Because they might not be happy if they get equal pay. Women aren't, women aren't, women aren't intelligent enough. Women or women or women or women are too agreeable to get the pay rises. Anyone who believes in equality, whether you call them feminists, call them whatever you want to call them, should basically give up. We should organise our societies along the lines of the lobsters. Pinochet. We should organise our societies along the lines of the lobsters. This is grossly insensitive. Like the lobsters, we're hardwired as men and women, but still women aren't going to make it. And that makes them, makes them, makes them unhappy, unhappy. And that's because it ain't So you say, I mean, that sounds pretty bad. You're saying, you're saying, you're saying, you're saying that's the way it is.